This video is about discharges in dogs, specifically pregnant dogs. What are they? How do you categorize them? What do you do when there's a problem? How do you know there's a problem? All right, so you've got, I've got three different colors we've got up here, yellow, green, and red. All right, sounds like a traffic sign, doesn't it? The yellow one is at the back end of the pregnancy, and it's one of two things, typically. It's either the mucus plug, that, which is kind of a slimy looking substance hanging off your dog's back end. It kind of looks like the uh, white from an, from an egg, the, the raw uh, egg whites. Mucusy, stringy, you know, like snot. Completely normal. What it is is the mucus plug forms on the entrance of the cervix. It stops pathogens and infections getting up into the uterus. As the dog gets close to whelp, the cervix starts to dilate or expand. And as that happens, this mucus plug falls out and there you see it hanging off the dog's back end or on the ground. What do you do about it? Not a thing. Probably means your dog's pregnant. Probably means you're close to whelp. But you sometimes see it. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you see it at day 10. Sometimes you see it as late as day, the last day of pregnancy. If you see it, don't worry about it. If you don't see it, don't worry about it. You don't have to do anything. You're not going to put the mucus plug back in the dog. No vet visit required. Totally normal. No panic. Good. That's that one. Another yellow discharge is amniotic fluid. The puppies are in the uterus, in a sac, surrounded by amniotic fluid. When it's whelp time, the sac, as the puppy is being pushed down the canal and you've got um, um, contractions going on, that bag can rupture. And here comes the fluid and it all comes out on the ground. And there's about half a cup of fluid there. So what would it look like? A vanilla -y kind of colored fluid. It doesn't have any distinctive smell to it. Um, this means, by the way, that it's time to get ready for whelp, or if it's going to be a C-section, you should already be heading to the vet. A dog, a puppy that's had the amniotic sac broken is not in any immediate danger. It still has its umbilical cord attached to the placenta, attached to mum. And until that placenta gets separated, there is an hour or two where this dog, this puppy, is probably going to survive. So it's not like you've got to drive hell for leather to the vet, but it does mean that you need to take action. Now, when you see this fluid, smell it. If it smells like urine, it's not amniotic fluid. If it doesn't smell like amniotic fluid, it doesn't smell like urine, it probably is amniotic fluid. And of course, we're talking about a dog that's obviously pregnant for this to be relevant, right? So, if you see amniotic fluid, time to get to the vet. You're not in a desperate measures. It's not like this is going to be done. As long as you're not seeing a green discharge, which would be separated from placenta, then that dog is probably gonna, that puppy is probably gonna be okay for some time in the vaginal canal. All right, green. Green is a lot more serious. Green is um, placental fluid. It's kind of a emerald green color, really kind of pretty dark. Very staining kind of a thing. Gets in your fingers, it stains your fingers red, uh, green. Um, what it is, is this is separation of the placenta from the mother, from the uterus wall. And when that happens, that puppy is then on its own. It doesn't get blood from mum, doesn't get oxygen from mum. If it's in the uterus, it gets oxygen from nowhere. And within about four minutes, it's dead. Now, you may just have a few drops of green. That is not by itself a concern. A dog that's still got a few days until labor and is showing you a few drops of green, I'd put that dog into a crate to have it rest for a while, 48 hours, and see if that little tear can heal itself up. If you see a lot of green, time to go to the vet. No, no mucking around here because you've got to, someone's got to take action to, to decide whether or not it's time for a C-section or not. Um, okay, so the green ones are concerned. Red. So red is typically more at the beginning part of a, um, a dog breeding. So a normal dog will start to drop blood, day one of its heat cycle, vulva swells up, you see blood on the ground, it gets more of it as time goes on over the next few days. Really pretty dark red color that then lightens up around day nine and goes maybe completely clear by about day 13. That's not all dogs, that's most dogs. But if you see this red discharge, and the dog's in heat, that's what it is. No big concern here. Obviously, you need to make sure that you keep that dog away from dogs that you don't want to be bred to. If you're gonna take that dog out for a walk, 
put a leash on the dog. If you leave this dog out in the backyard, I would be back there with the dog, wouldn't leave it unattended because male dogs and female dogs can do all kinds of gymnastics to get themselves bred. Okay, now, how long does that red discharge go on for? Typically by day 20 it stopped, but not in all dogs. So you might breed your dog and still see some spotting on bedding and that might concern you. It probably is of not of concern. Now, there are two times where a red discharge is of a concern uh, that's associated with a breeding that's happened. And the first one is what's called a pyometria. Pyometria is an infection of the uterus. Um, there's two versions of it. There's a closed and an open pyometria. The open pyometria is pretty treatable. That's where the uterus has not sealed off and all the muck, which is typically like a ready, creamy, thick discharge, uh, can be seen coming out of the vagina. That can typically be treated with antibiotics if you get on it early. First thing to do if you think you've got a pyometria, whether it be open or closed, is take dog's temperature. A temperature 102 or higher means that something significant is going on infection-wise, and you need to make a trip to the vet to discuss this and decide what the next course of action is. A lot of vets want to spay dogs with an open pyometria. I never do that. I try to treat it first, and most of the time you're quite successful. And it's quite common to see open pyometrias in dogs that are first time in heat and never been bred. And here we come with the pyometria. So temperature of 102, time to go to the vet, get some antibiotics on board, probably amoxicillin. If the dog has been bred, you can still have an open pyometria and have a successful litter. It's not necessarily the end of your litter. A closed pyometria, there is no discharge. The, the uterus is completely locked up and all the swelling is going on inside the uterus and the dog can get into a really bad situation where they can get septic shock, basically get an infection in the bloodstream. So if you've got a dog that's been bred, maybe it's showing a bit of swelling in the tummy, maybe it's a bit thirsty, maybe it's very listless, definitely not acting as normal, obviously not a happy dog. You take his temperature, it's 102 or higher, vet time, don't muck around with this. If that is not kept under control, then probably that dog will have to be spayed, otherwise you may lose the dog. So this is a very serious situation. The red discharge can also be caused by vaginitis. You can have a vaginitis or a UTI, a urinary tract infection. Both of those could cause a red discharge. Typically in those situations, if the dog may be thirsty, the dog may be itching its bottom on the, on the ground, there's things that you can, uh, again, take its temperature, less than 102, don't get too worried about it. I'd start off with a treatment like using uh, one of these uh, Walmart feminine hygiene uh, products to kind of douse the dog with kind of a slightly acidic um, uh, liquid. You can buy that at Walmart. I'd start there. If that doesn't fix it, then it's time to go to the vet. Maybe some antibiotics, but remember, you've got a pregnant dog, be careful about what antibiotics you use. Some antibiotics are better for things like kidneys and bladders. Uh, some antibiotics can be dangerous to be given to pregnant dogs. Amoxicillin is a general purpose, uh, uh, fairly safe for pregnant dogs. But again, I'm not a vet. That's a conversation that you have with your vet if you think you've got a vaginitis or a UTI. So the other kinds of discharge you'd see would be maybe um, you see you're three, four weeks into the pregnancy and then you see a bloody discharge with some globules in it, like some jelly-like substance. You could have passed a fetus. You could have aborted a fetus. What do you do in these situations? I put the dog on bed rest. 48 hours of just not much activity at all. Stick the dog in a cage. Make, just, you know, if the dog comes out, it gets out of my lap. I don't let the dog run around because I don't want any of this bouncing around going on that might separate something more than what it is. So lots of time, you can see some globules of stuff and it's still fine. It goes on to a normal pregnancy. Not a lot you can do here. It's not like you can open the dog up and do surgery on these situations. So you've pretty much got to run its course. But any time that you are concerned about discharge colors in dogs, the very first thing to always do is take the dog's temperature. If the temperature above 102, that's time to be thinking about a vet visit. If the temperature is you know, 101, 101.3, 99.8, those kind of ranges, don't get too worried about it. Just keep an eye on the dog. And if the dog's a happy dog and nothing else is going on, probably fine. And if it's this red spotting thing going on or the green spotting thing, then bed rest for a little bit. There you go. That's it. Hope that helps. Do pay attention to this. Keep on top of it. And good luck with your next litter. Bye.